No. Welcome back to English with Sarah. Welcome to your first term exam seminar with DDC. <laughs> So today we have um, a couple things here. I am primarily focusing on two parts of your write of your paper today. Okay, in particular, section B guided writing and section C review topic. Okay, now before we get things started, ah, uh, any one of you have like particular component that you really want to touch base on that you're expecting us to, you know, possibly if we have time, we could look into as well. Anybody? No? We're all good? Free to do whatever? Good? Okay, you know what? Then let's do it. Okay, so... I'm going to start you off by very quickly going through your exam seminar form. I'm sure you know what everything is. You've got four parts of a paper to your final grading system. It all adds up to one grade. Yeah, You have two parts on your written component. Two parts oral component, A-U-R-A-L, meaning listening and speaking. Today, we are going to focus more on paper two, in particular, guided and extended writing. If we really do need to touch base on paper one, which surprisingly has been an aspect that students have been asking for, um, we could, I suppose, look at one of the uh, 2022 state papers at the end of class. Uh, see if I can, you know, help give you some tips and tricks beyond it, okay? Now, this is something that I want to explain, yeah? Um, I think a lot of students don't know the difference in this. This is a governmental, basically, analysis of state papers, okay? Government analysis of state paper. How you want to look at this is, you want to see how easy or difficult it is for students to score and perform in each subject. So if you take a look at the English, right? Now, the way you want to do this is, um, the lower the score, the better students score in your GMPM. So things that students do very well, you can see, 4.04 Bahasa China, probably top scorers here. Okay. 4.11 BM, top scorer here. So we'll look at the top three. Uh. 4.40 Physics, top scorer here. So you can tell uh, English is at 5.23. So what does this mean? It's not the issue. Our passing rate is actually quite high at 28.4. The scoring of A, A minus, A plus is very low on average. So the passing rate isn't an issue. So if you have certain concerns with your subject, yeah, you can take a look at this and kind of predict on number one, will the paper be very difficult? Number two, how strict the marking system will be. So you can tell with English, the marking system is quite strict. That to score highly is an issue. Do we understand this? Now, so, but don't worry, there are definitely ways for us to bypass this. With the correct techniques, with the correct vocabulary, you can definitely increase your chances of scoring AI. And I'm going to show you a bit of that today. Now, we're going to start things off with a bit of a C-T-A-O-L to break it down to you. Um, I know not many of you uh, know specifically the details of I actually score my mark based on the Rubik's Cube. 
a lot of times students feel like, ah, English, ah, creative writing, you just write, lah. the teacher will mark subjectively, will mark holistically. There is, with the new CEFR system, there's actually a rubric that teachers have to follow to give marks off off. Okay? So if you realize in your essay, at the bottom of the component, the teachers mark it based on a C, C, A, O, and L segment. 20 mark structure, each component will be given, allocated, a 5 mark ratio. Okay, so there are certain things that you can ensure that you are doing to up that grading system. So in the world of creative writing for English, there are still methodological steps that you can take to at least ensure that you are hitting off benchmarks. Okay, so you tell me, in your CCAOL, let's start with C first, ah. Huh? What do you think your teacher looks for in content components? Only two things. In your C, C, A, O, L, in your content, your teacher looks for two things. Content, ma, correct or not? At the very least, it is going to be your point. Now, in English essays, short guided writing and expanded writing, you are required to have three points in each essay, okay? Um, would you get more points if you put four? Uh, it's all right, okay? A minimum of three paragraph answering three topic per essay. Uh, and crucially, these points, number two, have to be accurate answers to the questions asked. So two things, your point, your question, okay? Your point, your question, that's it. So long as you have sufficient, correct points that answer the question, you're going to get it done, okay? Now, number two, CA is what? Appropriateness of writing. This is where you have, number one, your explanations, which revolve around, if you've been in my class, we talk about the P system, correct or not? You have your point in the content, and it's going to be divided into your elaboration, example, effect. So not only do you have enough elaboration, it has to be accurate elaborations, ex explanations. Okay, that's number one. Number two, the tone and feel of it, okay? So whether you're using the right tone, whether you're using the right vocabulary, to in particular, to particularly talk about tone, vocab, whether or not it suits the feel of the writing. So whether if you're writing a formal writing, you're using the correct vocabulary or informal writing, you're using the correct vocabulary. Okay. So for example, in our short writing task, we use a lot of emotional exclamations and you can write to your friend and say like, oh, that's great. Wow. Sounds fun. Exclamation mark. See you soon. This kind of things correct or not. But obviously, if you write a report to your school principal, you're not going to be like, see you soon. Call me if you need. Correct or not? You're going to be like, feel free to contact me at da -da 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 if you have any inquiries. So the tonal component of it and the vocabulary use, whether it is appropriate to the scenario or not. So two things. Number one, explanation. Number two, feel. Now, organization is one of the very few things that I think you can actually take charge in. Because truth be told, man, Everything else, right? You know what you know, you don't know what you don't know. Correct or not? In terms of spelling, obviously, I assume when you spell a word, you're confident that the word is correct. So, you won't be able to like read through your essay the second time around and be like, maybe this is not correct because that's the only word you know or the only way you know how it's spelled, but correct? But organization is actually something that you can simply double check your essay. 
So with organization, you are looking essentially at your linkers and connectors. Or sometimes you hear people say phone junctions. Same, same, but different. Uh, huh? Now, here's the trick. You want to make sure that in every paragraph, you have a starter linker, a middle linker, and an end linker. So if you have a four-sentence component, remember we talked about between C and CA, your points are point, elaboration, example, effect. If you have a basic four-sentence paragraph, at least three linker and connectors. So in the start, what are you going to look at? Words like for one, besides A, you also have B. You can use words like more over. And in our third point, uh, for those who that who are who are not new to us, in the third point, we use a lot of opposing points. So we do tend to use words like however more in the start of the sentence of paragraph three. Okay. Now, of course, there's a lot more. I'm just giving you a rough draft through it. Now, in the middle, we use a lot of fanboys. Now, let's do a little bit of a warm-up. Everyone in class, hands on your keyboard. Can anybody tell what your fanboy is? What your fanboy is? It's essentially the points that you can use to connect. Not in the start of a sentence. This is in the middle, correct or not? To connect your point with your elaboration. Ah, everybody who say furthermore, bam, bam. Not in the start, because if you really want to say furthermore, actually it's the beginning of the paragraph. Uh. This one is a middle connector. Yes, Yingyi, you've got four. And good job, Shang Rei. Cannot be next. Next, you got use in the middle, May. But very good. So, good job, Jasmine. Off is a preposition, my dear. These two are actually cousins. N and O are actually cousins. I wouldn't even say sisters. Y is the synonym of but. Anybody? Jeremy, one ping, are you okay? You have yet. And for the last two, you have no and or. Okay, so this one you actually use in between of one sentence connecting two points, point and elaboration. Okay, so you try and use that. You may also have heard of something um, called, well, I called it Pisa Wawam. I should write it vertically, right? Isa Wawabu is a connector that can be used in the beginning of sentences as well as in the middle. It's a combination of both. I'll put it here for you. <laughs> it's a funny word for you to remember. So you can have if, since, as. I'm trying to see if I can recall it. What else are there? If, since, as. What else do you think? Nice, Yingyi. While, when, although, these three are timers. So you have after, before, until, because. So you have two series of middle linkers, huh? middle linkers. And then of course, you have your conclusive linkers at the end of your paragraph. We're talking about, again, we're talking about paragraphs. We are not talking about your categories of intro, body, conclusion. Huh? So at the end of your paragraph, you usually have effects, correct or not? So you're going to give me words like, therefore, ergo, um, if your teacher is a prefers longer starters, 
you can use words like as a result, consequently. Teacher, how to find points? Ah, okay. Um, you know what? Let me draw it here very quickly. Now, if it's a factual essay, right, I use a stickman figure. From small to big, from yourself to the outside world, okay? So you're going to start with self, uh, family. Try, even though I put two there, uh, your aim is to try not to use two of the same limb. School friends. If your character of that day is not from a school and from a workplace, then you change it to work setting law. Hell, you have your MPE, mental, physical, emotional, and then you have your environment, flora and fauna. Some, they like to talk about like cause and effect, cause, effect and solution with environment. And then you have your society and country. Sometimes global. Okay? This is how I look at it. I'll, I'll give you a second to write things down later, so don't worry about it. Huh? Now, in language, probably the least, one of the least that you can control, you have your grammar, spelling, punctuation. Punctuation is that your comma, your full stop, whether you're using exclamation mark, semicolons correctly or not. Okay? So if you were to ask me, right, I feel like the only thing you can actively control and double check. You know, with the five minutes at the end of your paper, you read it through, what can you at the very least double check and ensure that you have a, truth be told, only organization. And it's very easy to correct. You can just put a little arrow and write it up top, right? Because in terms of content and communicative achievement, they match together. They are your point, elaboration, example, in fact, essentially your elaboration. Unless you really feel like it's super duper wrong. At the last five minutes of the exam time, I have had instances where I had to suggest the student to really just cut off the paragraph, write, refer to end of essay, I write paragraph two, let's say. And then at the end of your essay, right, you finish already, you write here, paragraph two. And then you write the new paragraph here. That is like the worst case scenario, la, worst case scenario. And usually can only work for factual writing. If you write story, you cannot make adjustments like this one. Okay? Now, anybody needs a bit of time to write this down? Can you put your hands up, please? I'll wait for you. In five, four, three, two, one. Anybody? Nobody? Perfect. So these are essentially a little overview of what school examiners mark through and how you can kind of counter those marking systems there. Okay? Now, let's take a look directly to what we are going to do today. We're going to start off with extended writings review first. Now, what are the three, well, four formats that extended writing has? Can you tell me, please? What are the four formats of extended writing? So just in case you don't recall, extended writing looks at uh, 200 to 250 words. Three choose one section C component. So what formats do you have here? Very nice. You have a story. What else? Review. One more. Very good, Jeremy, Jasmine. Formatted writing between article or report. They will not come out both article and report because it's under formatted. Nah. So only one or the other. So you can tell for sure ah, story and review is 100% will come up. So they're more standardized. They're more structured. You confirm will come out. So if you just kind of prepare yourself a little bit, it's a surefire way to anticipate a question there. 
Okay, so let's do a review today because I have been doing stories and articles in class quite often lately. <laughs> so I want to catch up on the review writing as well. Now, the review we know is usually opinion after you have consumed something, whether you've consumed a product, an experience, um, or, you know, enjoyed a particular process of something, and then you're providing your opinion on it. So, I would definitely suggest that it be a bit more personal, okay? Now, what are some very popular review topics to be given? Take a look at the subjects on the left. Now, you've got restaurant, film, bookstore, homestay, traveling, wall, and song. These are some of the really popular ones. Now, so how are we going to group them up together, yeah? What are some words that you can oftentimes use in reference to these things? Actually, I want to add on one more as well. Restaurant, film, bookstore, homestay, traveling mall, song. I would even be willing to add in products, gadgets. Right, gadgets are quite popular, huh? I think last year's paper from fall. Uh, many of the schools did one on mobile phone or uh, laptop, especially during the COVID season. A lot of the school review exam papers were on. Just required for uh, remote learning at home. Right. Exactly. It's very current issue subject. So you just kind of want to see what's going on around you lately. It usually doesn't stray far from that. So let's take a look. If you're looking at a product here, what would you usually talk about? Let's say today they ask you about a film. Okay, I'm going to show you an example. Uh, what can you talk about the product? The product literally is the V, right? It's the film. So you can definitely talk about interesting plot line, summary of plot, characters. Correct, you're good looking or talented actors or characters. Now, there is a difference between actor and character. Uh. Can anybody tell me the difference between the two? Actor and character. What is the difference between the two? Yes, real and not real. Actor is the person who acts. Correct is just the fictional written character. Exactly. Don't confuse the two of them. It's very different. For example, Harry Potter. Harry Potter is actor or character? Character. Very good. The Harry Potter is the character from the book. Character. What is that? Who is the actor who played Harry Potter? Anybody know? Harry Potter is not your generation, right? Daniel Radcliffe is my childhood series, okay? Daniel Radcliffe, okay? So that is the actor. And then the character from the book is Harry Potter. We don't read Harry Potter. Then what's like, what's the generational, like what's the book of your generation? Like my generation, right? There was Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Twilight. It was the generation of mythical, magical characters. But your generation is, I know what your generation is. Maze Runner. The trilogy. And then like Hunger Games. All, all these like escape tribal, kill each other, gang gang one. Right? Maze Runner, very nice. I think your generation is this series. This whole series of like tribe versus tribe escaping control of like, you know, central government. Where God still stand by Twilight then. I must be honest, uh, I bought the whole Twilight series, okay? 
I must be honest, I bought the whole Twilight series. I cannot even finish the first book way. You knew it's going to kill me already. I have friends who love the Twilight series, okay? But for me, I just feel like the first book was just so slow and draggy. I just got so bored with it. I just couldn't finish it. I did finish Maze Runner and Hunger Games. So, I am that gang. Twilight cannot last. Twilight very hard. Twilight is very hard. I don't know why I just... Doesn't click with me. Now, let's say today I talk about, let's come back here. If we talk about books, I feel like we're never going to finish our lesson. Cafe. What books have you been reading lately? I'll tell you during break later, okay? If we have break or at the end of the class, I'll introduce you some books I've been reading lately. Now, cafe. What are some products in a cafe? It's very logical. I, don't, I feel like you shouldn't overthink things. If you go to a cafe today, if the two of us go to a cafe today, wait, not two of us, two, four. If the six of us go to a cafe today, okay, what are we going to comment on? Well, yes, the food. Food and beverage. Nah, right? Maybe it's one of those really fancy drink cafes. Yes, the environment. The service, obviously. No matter how good the food is, if the server puts his come in my food you're gone <laughs> you're out of the picture okay now let's see shopping malls malls or institutions or businesses what are you going to comment on i can think about a couple things straight away if i go to a new mall yes shop options Good job, Jeremy. Convenience. Now, in terms of convenience and facilities, you can talk about things like uh, parking. Uh, what? Um, oh, what do you call it? Like the room where the mothers can feed the baby. Nurt. Oh, brain fart. Nursing. Nursing room? Nursery? <laughs> nursing, nursery, toilets, escalators, elevators. Uh, whether they are disabled friendly, right? Like, do you have enough elevators? Do you have enough OKU toilets? Are your escalators wide enough for like wheelchair-bound people? Do you have like, uh, what do you call it? Like braille on your buttons or on your thighs? You know, all those things. Okay, you friendly, yeah? Now, let's say gadget, okay? If I talk about laptop, usually when they talk about gadget, it's one of two things. Mobile phones or laptops? If they talk about laptops, what can you talk about? Affordability. Uh, I wouldn't say price because why? Price is here. Talk about the product of the laptop first. Don't talk about money first. Because you see the movie, I never talk about price. The cafe, I didn't talk about price. Oh no, oh no. All the, all the, all the atas computer jargons are coming out i okay i am not very tech savvy okay so i'm gonna try my best function i'm gonna group it all at functionalities okay whether you have your sd card your ram function your motherboard your your all of that <laughs> i really don't know my computers okay all of those things function um I think with laptops, there's only one of two things, correct? Function. I mean, battery life, I only think of as function. Aesthetic value. I want my laptop to look cute, man, when I bring it up. <laughs> it's going to be cute. It's going to be lightweight, okay? So just the function and features of it, okay? 
So you get what, where my brain is going. You get where my brain is going. Now, when we talk about price, what are some words you can use? Looking at the product there, if I say, well, yeah, this cafe yeah, is very, the food, the price of the food served there is very, how could you describe it? Or even take the example of laptop. Remember my two rules in English, huh? you either use process of elimination or you use example. Okay, so put yourself in the shoes of like the laptop or the cafe. Very good. I would use the word affordable. One more. What else? Would I use the word cheap? I actually wouldn't. Can anybody tell me why? Cheap. Uh, not common. I know, no, 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 no. I always tell my students one. In English, right, we're not looking for level three vocabularies all the way. They want level one, two, and three. In languages, BMBI and BC, uh, your school examiner actually looks for variety of skill set. They want to see you being able to use all sorts of skill sets. Not the most difficult one from head to toe. I always use the example of, you know, it's like your girlfriend. She don't want to eat bird nest ten bottle. She wants to eat ten different dishes. French fries, nuggets, burgers, sushi. She wants to eat ten dishes and then each dish eat one mouthful. That's what you're supposed to look for in terms of languages. So there's no common or easy word one. Budget friendly. The reason why I don't use the word cheap uh, is because to me, uh, nine, ringgit, nine ringgit chicken rice, I might be like, whoa, very expensive. To you, it may be like, ah, oh, chum change. Have you heard of the word chump change? Okay. I mean, uh, fancy money only, la, small money. So I don't like to, to use the word cheap because it's very subjective between you and me. I, I would rather you use the word affordable. Budget friendly. Or I could say, well, wow, this is exorbitant. Extremely expensive. Okay. Or sometimes I like to use the word value for money. It's worth your money. It is bad for buck. So instead of cheap, you could use these words. You could use bang for buck. Okay. Or affordable. If you want to say expensive, right? I would actually suggest that you use bank for buck. Like, yes, a bit expensive, but I still want to encourage you to buy it. Then you can use its value for money. Okay? Now, promotion. What can I say? Promotion means what? Uh? Yes, sale. So usually if you encourage somebody to buy something, right, you want them to get the work, the best deals, correct? Luckily, Malaysia is a country that throughout the year, you have incessant non-stop discount festivities and seasons, correct? You got end of the year sales, begin, go back to school sales. You got Chinese New Year sales, Hari Raya sales, Deeper Bali sales, Christmas sales. Even nowadays, I even see like Halloween um promotions lately mother's day sales father's day sales non-stop sale fund so you can definitely say currently running whatever whatever promotion hari raya father's day uh, chinese new year uh, okay whatever that is or you could ask your friend to like make use how do you get discounts? Of loyalty card plus birthday rewards for discounts, correct? 
I only shop in September just because it's my birthday month and I get like the best birthday rewards and loyalty card points. Okay, now place. What word can you use for the topic of movie? You can say this movie is shown in all major cinemas in Clang Valley. What else? If I want to talk about cafe, malls, what can I say? It is the shop is conveniently located. And I don't know about you, but with cafe and malls, uh, I need myself some ample with ample parking spots. Now, laptop, where can you buy them from? If it's a laptop, where can you buy them from? Digital mall. This kid uh, must live in PJ. <laughs> Otherwise, you know digital mall, correct? Uh, correct? Okay, I suppose any digital mall. Or you can even buy it directly from brand online nowadays it's so easy to get things online right on any online marketplace okay now do you need a bit of time to write this down put your hands up in five four three two one anybody no we all good okay so you do have some useful phrases here take a look at it we've divided it into introductions body and conclusion so you can see how it would apply into it, yeah? Now, we'll try to come up with two rangas here, maybe three, okay? And then we'll go through your model essay as an example, okay? Now, let's take a look at number one. You, you have recently bought a mobile phone. Write a review about the phone explaining your favorite features and if you would recommend it to others. So as usual, no matter section A, B, and C, when I do my essay, I always start with the WTF. Who? So you're talking about you? Okay. You, if there's no particular pangkat provided here, be you. Be their 17-year-old high school student. Topic. You're talking about mobile phone, but in what sense? Write a review about the phone. T1, favorite features. T2, would you recommend T3? Now, before we go into this, uh, I kind of want to talk about something. When you look at a review online, what do you look out for? Can you tell me? Let's say today I want to buy literally a mobile phone, okay? What are you going to talk to me about? You want to introduce me a phone. What are you going to talk to me about? The brand, correct? Like I think number one in any review, I want to know the product first, okay? Uh, the product first. Uh, what brand it is, basically your 5W1H la. What brand it is, uh, what are some, what's the name of it, right? How does it look like? Size, features, characteristics, correct? Function, correct. I think the basic what, when, where, why, how. Then number two, I'm going to talk about the price. Right? I'm going to talk about the price. And number three, especially in your conclusion, before you wrap it up, what do I want to know? Because here's the thing, you and I, we're normal people, you know. 
we don't know how to evaluate these kind of things. Price and buy where lah. I can put together. We don't know how to evaluate these kind of things. Yes, you can tell me ah, this phone got function A B C D E at this price. To me, it is just like mumbo jumbo random information that you've just told me. I don't have the technical knowledge to determine whether these functions are good functions or bad functions, whether I would need it in my life or not. So at the end of the day, especially with my conclusion, I feel like it is crucial for that person to actually give me a conclusive review. So at the end of the day, you say so many things already. Lah. This one, good or no good? You got to give me a report card. You get what I mean? So with my conclusion, right, I always do a grade. I call it a grading system. Okay. You can either give it a number base, like, oh, three out of five. Three stars out of five stars. At the end of the day, I think, yes, five. Or actually, I think, uh, at the end of the day, don't buy. Uh, there's better use for your money. Uh. You get what I mean? At the last part, you need to give me a conclusive pointer. Okay? So usually, this is my rundown. So obviously, with the product, you can write a couple paragraphs depending on how many features or functions you want to talk about. This usually is like the first paragraph. And then you have your, your body here. B1 and 2. Then maybe this one is B3. Okay, and this is conclusion. You see what I mean? It applies to everything. Let's say today I want to talk about mobile phone. Okay, what phone are we going to talk about? iPhone? Again, I'm not very technologically savvy. Um, I have only used either a Samsung phone. Okay, or currently... Apple phone. Okay. I don't know any other phones. Truth be told, do I do you, do I think I'm making the best out of my money with the phone? Not. I'm using the bare basics of what people use with phones. I'm not one of those super atas people who like maximize all functions. I, I I'm on WhatsApp. I call people. I'm on social media. That's it. <laughs> so truth be told, I buy some Lao Ya phone also can. Ego lah, ego. <laughs> FOMO. So, let's say we talk about Huawei. Ah. I never used China phone before. I don't know. Ah. Um, let's come into the middle, okay? Samsung. Is your Apple no good? How you know? Teacher Junhan use Android. <laughs> Ooh, teacher Junhan memang he like Android phone lah, okay? He memang like Android phone lah. So, okay, let's go with that, okay? Samsung. Uh, Galaxy. I think the new ones are like the Galaxy phones, right? S23 Ultra. Let's give it a name first. Android gang. <laughs> like Samsung has the new, the cap cap one, right? The folding phone. Either cap like that or you close off like that. Try it out. They have the two not new. Oh, because I don't know. I'm sorry. I really don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, you can give in the first paragraph, like I said, basic information first. Okay. Basic information. So, what are some basic information that you can give me? So, we can say that it is an eco-friendly phone. They didn't know that, did you? It's an eco-friendly phone because it uses eco-conscious materials to build the phone. Okay. Uh, what is the difference between S23 and the older phone? Uh? New colors release. Okay. Basic aesthetic first because if you take a look at my T2, that's when I talk about my feature, my right? So basic introduction. Then in my body, one, what am I going to talk about? Feature one. T2 
Did you know why you changed from Samsung to Apple? Um, I got the Apple for really cheap. It's an iPhone 12. I got it for 2,000 ringgit. Second hand, huh? I buy from my sister. So I got it for really cheap. Even cheaper than if I would have bought like a new Android phone. But I must say, I actually quite enjoyed using an Android. I actually quite enjoyed it. You know what I love the best? As a teacher, uh, I love the S Pen. So feature one, I'm going to talk about built in right the pen is very is very convenient um s pen okay i'm able to work on the go now if i am going to use i should put this here actually because this is my point elaboration i work on the go Now, example, I can do a couple things. If I take myself as a teacher, I can say I can mark on the go, right? Mark my work on the go whilst commuting. For a student like you, you can say, I mean, choose one, I know to write both. Ah. Do you have a lot of digital work or homework to do? Yes, project. Okay, then you can say complete digital projects on the go. Same, same. iPhone camera better. Okay, now number two, but you know, uh, Android camera is actually very strong. Uh, is it the Oppo or like the Huawei? You can zoom in like 30 times. They are very king also. Uh. They are not king. Eh? But iPhone got three camera. Yes. So although we have the three camera, but we cannot zoom in 30 times. Fair or not? Nobody need 30 times. <laughs> so true. So you see, uh, at the end of the day, uh, it truly depends on each phone has their pros and cons. You just need to find the features that suit your needs the best, correct? So improve camera system. You can talk about the elaboration. They have a new automated... 200 MP setting. So, example. Suitable for amateur photographers like me, like myself. Amateur photographers like myself, it automatically enhances or adjusts lighting and shutter speed okay now last one effect what can i say ensures beautiful pictures each time Now, so do you see how my point elaboration example works? So this is literally my PE, how I get four sentence per paragraph here. Huh? Now, point three, obviously, if I want to introduce you a phone, I cannot forget the price. Unfortunately. Lead. How much is the price? I must say, uh, phones nowadays are, are crazy priced. Are crazily priced. Literally, it's like a normal human being's one to two month salary, correct or not? Right. Not every 
everybody earns so much money one ma, but your phone is like a whole month salary. How is that person going to survive? All right. So the pricing, uh, you can say. Is everybody done with the left hand side? Anybody still writing the left hand side? Can you let me know? In five, four, three, two, one. Anybody? Nobody? I'm going to move it to the right hand side and zoom into it. Yeah. So the big, the pricing is unfortunate. A big turn off. Elaboration. Exorbitant. No, 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 no. What can I say? It, phones usually depend on storage sizes. The bigger the storage size, usually the more expensive it is, right? Example, effect. It is between 5699 to 7199. So what is the effect? If really, really, really want to buy the phone, there's multiple ways for you to do it, correct? You could uh, sign with a telco line. Usually, there is a uh, package price. You could do a 0% installment plan. You could trade in any old phones. to subsidize the price of new phone. Okay? Now, conclusion. Give me your final grading. Even though pay in installment, no? so don't always tell me the good things only, you know. I mean, realistically, any review of any product must have good and bad one, ma. But can't you really like, what oh, this thing is like 10 out of 10, so good, so fantastic, man, correct or not? So, with good and bad all in review, though, good and bad, my final decision is what? Samsung. Galaxy S23 Ultra is still a phone to buy. Four out of five. Okay? Then what you can even do is give a little bit of a suggestion to resolve the negative point. So the negative is the price, right? Then you can suggest all. Oh, with a little bit of financial planning. Surely you can afford it. Okay? Now, anybody needs a bit of time to write this down, put your hands up. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we're good. Now, uh, we won't be able to go through all of the practices, but don't worry. We actually have model papers here with the full essay on top. So instead, what I want you to look at is, let's reverse analyze it. Get your highlighters or your you no know, different colored pens, red, black, and blue ready, and we're gonna go through it together. So, like just now we mentioned, right, in our phone review, we talked about Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. The first paragraph I talk about basic info. Basic info. Where what did we talk about? Eco-friendly phone, that's my point. Elaboration, made with recycled and eco-conscious materials. Point two, fresh new colors. And what is the effect? 
phone with more innovation and less footprint. So remember, uh, in my factual writing, I'm looking at four sentences per paragraph. Point, elaboration, example, effect. So you're going to see it appear in the next couple of paragraphs in your body. So number one, built-in S Pen, feature one. And then you've got allows me to work on the goal, elaboration. Example, as a dedicated teacher, I can mark while traveling. And then effect enables me to work effortlessly. Now, and within the paragraph, you remember what I said? You want to make sure in terms of organization, you've got a start, middle, end. In this one, I repeated the question. And then I have a middle, which is or. And then I have an end, which is therefore. Do you see how it's being used? Similarly, I use a question form as a starter. Whether or more. And then I have, I have got to say. So more casual forms of it improve camera system, which is my point. 200 MP system, elaboration. Example, automatically chooses. Good for amateur photographers, automatically chooses to save the sizes. Example one, example two, effect, saving gears for storage spaces. However, I've got my negative pointer here, my negative pointer, hence. And I'm talking about pricing is a big turn off. Depending on storage space, elaboration, example, effect. One, effect. Two. Final result, I'm sticking to my guns. And then, suggestions that is how you're looking at your essay okay so same thing if i talk about a computer you realize that the structural component will be the same you have your introduction and i'm introducing you with to the acer chromebook spin um 514 my product basic info i'm going to mark down some points for you are uh. number one 360 hinge and touch screen Number two, long battery life. However, it's very heavy. And then the touchscreen display makes it difficult to work outdoors. Okay, three points. I'm going to show you the next two questions that you will see up top as well. You have a writing app review talking about easy write app. Clean and bright with tasteful animation. Allow students to be creators. However, lacks autocorrect. Traveling review. Talking about Langkawi Island. You have wide array of water sports. You've got Langkawi Sky Bridge, which is a must visit for thrill seekers. Duty-free shopping. So I'm marking down the key points for you so that it makes it a bit easier for you to review your full essays here, okay? Making it easier for you to review your full essays here. Now, anybody has any questions up to this point? No? Okay, now let's take a look at the guided writing here. I want to touch base on everything. Uh. Guided writing here is essentially section B. 
120 words to 150 words. One choose one section. Between narrative and expository. Sounds fancy pansy, but essentially it is a story or factual. Factual definitely is more popular because nowadays they do tend to prefer giving you the story in your section C component. Okay, so same thing. You're going to take a look at your points. You're going to do your WTF first. Who are you talking about? Discussing the benefits of having outdoor activities. Your teacher has asked you to write an essay about it. Most common outdoor activities. Benefits of having outdoor activities. Which activity suits you most? Okay, so same thing. You have a class, you have a teacher, you know that you are you, a 17-year-old high school student. Topic, having outdoor activities. Question one, most common outdoor activities, plural, uh, benefits, plural. Which activity suits you the most? T3, singular activity. Now, I'm going to give you a, couple, a bit of time to just have to think about this situation. So how do I usually look at my essay? Uh? Again, I need three points, right? So I can just directly answer this situation here, especially with the first one. What is the most common activity, outdoor activity nowadays? I would, in fact, use it in my introduction. Why? If you take a look at this part, uh, you realize it's plural component, right? So actually, uh, you can put body one, body two here. And then last one is body three. So I usually like to do, use my Q1 in my introduction, especially since it's a listing question. that You don't need to further elaborate. You just need to give me example, 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 example. You get what I mean? Okay. Now, let's have a bit of a go at it. So how are you going to approach your points here? Yeah? Now, in this kind of factual components, uh, I do enjoy starting my paragraph with uh, a, my introduction. Give me a second. My introduction with a situational aspect. So. In this case, I do like to say things like current issue, okay? Why am I even writing this essay? And then I can say, law, uh, use, use a quote sentence, right or not? Encouraging people to be outdoors, I can say, all work, starting with a quote, all work, And no play, do we know this one? Makes Jack a dull boy. So my issue is, it is important to strike a balance between work and leisure. So... One of the things that you can do is topic of the day, outdoor activities. Now, what are some common outdoor activities such as? Now, what some activities that you partake in? What is the meaning of a quote? Uh, a quote is like a peribasa, you know, a peribasa, a saying, a proverb, an idiom. Uh, if you understand Mandarin, okay, if you understand Mandarin. So what are some outdoor activities that people tend to do very often? 
Must be outdoor, ah. You don't have to say play games at home, read storybooks. Exercise. Very good. But exercise is actually in a very big category, if I not. So I can say exercise. But best if you break it down, lah. You can say running, uh, swimming, correct or not. What else? What are some other uh outdoor activities? All exercise, correct or not? Your basketball, all that. So do you see what I mean? It is best if you don't use exercise. And just use running, swimming as examples. But there are also activities that you can do that is not exercise, ma, correct or not? Maybe with your family and friends during the school holiday, you go where? What type of trip? It must be activity, type of activity. Ah. You, don't, you don't go and say like, uh, you go to those retreats and just lepa and do nothing. You can say shop, camping. Correct or not? Camping is also outdoor. Ma. Team. Very good. Team or adventure park. Things like a uh, Sunway Lagoon. Correct? Very good. Even Gunting Highland, the new one also can. Okay? So, outdoor activities. Okay? Now, what is your effect? You must give me an effect. Now, I got a couple. Run, swim, camping is more mother nature, right? Uh, to be one with mother nature. Or you can say the team part and adventure to release to escape the rat race. Rat race essentially means the busyness of work, right? Like work life. Or for in your case, school life. Okay, school life. Now, number one, question number one are uh, benefits of having outdoor activities. Now, remember at the very beginning, I told you in factual writings like this, what technique can I refer to? What can I use? I can use the stick man, correct or not? Okay, I can use the stigment to come up with my benefits. Now, in terms of this, again, let me remind you, I got set family and self, school and friends, health, divided into mental, physical, emotional, environment, flora and fauna, and society, correct? Now, try not to use the same limb. If you're already talking about self, maybe don't talk about family already or group them together. Otherwise, it seems like you're talking about the same thing over and over again, correct? So if it were up to you, what are some benefits of outdoor activities? Take a look at your stick, man. Nice, Jeremy. So I could use number one, friends. Very good. Either you make some friends or if you go with groups of family and friends that you already know, the relationship can become closer. Correct? Perfect. We'll put that one in later. One more. One more. What else can you say? Again, use your examples. If you choose camping with friends and family, you can get closer. Ma. If I say running and swimming, eh, 
Yes, Jeremy. What, Jeremy? Not bad. I can talk about physical health. I can even talk about mental health. Physical health, of course, if I go running, I go swimming, I play basketball. Physically, I build muscle, I gain stamina, I get stronger immunity, correct? What about your mental health? Physical health, of course, your body becomes stronger, but mental health, eh? you get to release stress. So you can choose a couple things. If you choose their friend, then you choose one health ball, correct? I would suggest the uh, same thing with the exercise. Don't group it as health. Separate it individually to mental and physical. Then you've got two points there. Okay? Should you choose one mental, one physical like that? Yes or no? Ask for two points, Ma. Should you choose one mental, one physical? Yes or no? No. Why? I already say, right? Try not to give points from the same branch. If you choose mental and physical, both also help. Seems like your point is very similar. So I would choose one friend and one health branch. Okay, so let's put that all in. Apply your PEEE. -E -E. Point one, I would say improve health Mental, physical, emotional health. Okay. What is my elaboration? If you talk about physical, work out to body. If you talk about mental relief, well, temporary relief. La. Temporary relief. To life. Examples. Again, if you choose physical, you can say build muscle, lose fat. Okay, if you choose mental, you can say focus on exercise, stresses of life, put on hold. All right, and then your effect. Would be the same for two, correct? You are able to release. Um, if you choose physical, uh, avoid illnesses. If you choose mental, you can say release stress. Can I physical and mental together? Ah, the only worry is if you write both, ah, then the word count might be a bit too much. I would in fact just choose one or the other. Lah. Because you've got another two more body wall. Correct or not? Okay. Anybody needs a bit of time for the left-hand side? Put your hands up in five, four, three, two, one. Nobody, everybody catching up very well, yeah? Now, point number two, what can I talk about? Just now, Jeremy already said, right? Strengthen relationship. Point two, I think you can say one of two points. If you're talking about strangers, it can be broaden social circle. Right? You make new friends. So, my elaboration would answer the question why. Why can you make new friends? Let's say you go to the park and you play basketball. With park goers, you basically 
make friends with like-minded people. People who share your same interests. You make new friends, correct or not? Especially, example, what? Group activities. If you say you go running and you run alone, then maybe a bit difficult. But what can you do? Join those Facebook running groups, law, correct or not? And then you can be friends. People from all walks of life. Young people, old people, working people, people who are studying, correct? And what is the effect? How does it affect you? You will be able to widen your perspective in life. Widen your perspective in life. Does it make sense? If it does, give me an okay thumbs up party pop. A love shape in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, thank you, Yingyi. -Yi. So number three, I'm gonna choose one activity. I'm going to choose one activity, yeah? Now, what do I like? Personally, Q3, I'm going to choose hiking. Personally, I'm going to choose hiking. Why? Hiking or swimming also actually I quite enjoy. At the end of the day, it elaboration. Check. Point elaboration example effect. Hiking brings me away. From the hustle and bustle of life. To be one with nature. So what is an example? An example can be an action to be taken. So you can suggest people to do go hiking uh, once a week. There's actually a lot of like small hikes or mountains or hills, uh, protected forests within Klang Valley, within the city. So it's actually quite convenient. You don't really have to like go far, far away, Lena. And then you can say it rejuvenates me, <laughs> recharges or resets my mental condition to take on a new week. Rejuvenates means like recharge, refreshes. So conclusion, what I like to do, I like to summarize the topic of outdoor activities. Today, our topic is outdoor activities. So you can say what? Outdoor activities brings 
numerous value to one's life. And then I like to have a bit of an action or in this case, like a slogan. Try it for you. Grab a friend. Maybe if you get scared, you don't have to do yourself, right? Grab a friend and try it for yourself. Okay. Now let me give you a bit of time to just write everything down. Let me know if there's like pretty basas or vocabularies that we need some explaining before we move on. Huh? Okay. Okay. Now, um, if, now that everybody is finished, I want you to take note of something. So we are actually about done here, but let's take a look at this. Now, these are a series of questions that we think are quite common for your exams. First term. Now, I want to clarify. Uh, let me clarify this. This is not, not, I want to say importantly, uh, this is not a question spotting. We are not predicting anything. We are not spotting any questions that is just silly to do. Um, but we have noticed that this is essentially a quite popular exam topics uh, in school. Okay, in schools. So your, your class has been discussing family members. Your teacher has asked you to write a 125 to 150 word about a member of your family who you adore. Now, this is essentially what I've done in class with my students, which is commonly known as inspirational people or person. Now, I always tell my students to prepare this topic because this topic is very popular. Memang is very popular. Ah. And I always tell my students to prepare one famous person one family member, one not so famous, one not famous person. Okay, these are essentially the two types of people that they will ask you in regards to this topic. So, who is this person? Reasons for adoring him? What this person teaches you? So, very easily you could. I mean, people most of the time talk about their mothers, ah, right now, mother or father. Very rarely talk about sibling one, son, uncle. Okay. So if you talk about parents, usually it's the sacrifices that they have made for the family. You have seen how your parents have gone through difficulty bringing you up, sacrificing themselves to ensure that you had a better chance building or molding a better future for yourself. Okay? What this person teaches you, the final end goal. Okay? We can show you model essays at the very end of the day. We're going to upload it into the... Uh, website you can definitely refer from them but like I said if you talk about your mother you can definitely a couple things that you can say what they're very prudent saving money uh, your family not very rich but your mommy always you know find ways to tighten her belt to make sure that you don't miss out on anything in life other people got can learn piano you also can learn piano other people can join swimming you also can join swimming okay very prudent number one number two you can say how he is very determined whenever there are challenges he always is proactive to find ways to solve the matter number three you can talk about how she is very supportive uh, in your dreams okay very caring very loving very supportive okay what this person teaches you I would choose two here and then one here this one can put in Q1 introduction okay what this person teaches you can say, 
financial literacy. Use obviously you're gonna use the same points here, right? Takan you say her good qualities are prudency, determination, and supportive, and then you say teach you other things. So financial literacy. Don't simply waste money, right? Avoid decrease discretionary spending, that which is unnecessary spending. Or like things like save for rainy days. Determine, you can say, it teaches you to be resilient. Do not fear failure. Supportive in your dreams. Be courageous in achieving my dreams. Okay? Be courageous in achieving my dreams. Now, if I very easily talk about the next one, pros and cons of online shopping, uh, how to make the most of it. Advantages of online shopping is what? Can anybody tell me? Can anybody tell me what are some advantages? Save time, what else? Save time, what else? A lot of variety, okay? So number one, I could say, because it is plural form, uh, it is plural form, if I talk about convenience, I can talk about the fact that it is time convenience. I don't need to go out and buy, right? I can just click, 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 click online and get it sorted. Or effort convenience. I don't need to change, drive out, beat traffic, go into the parking lot to find parking, walk to the mall, go through all the incidences, and then get and then get the stuff cried out. What else? A lot of variety. Uh, can I, I think I even say price advantage. Usually it's a lot cheaper. Not a lot lah. 15%, 20% cheaper than uh, the brick and mortar outside shop cried out. Because they don't need I mean, they save more money from, you know, renting an outlet, uh, hiring workers to serve you. And with that money, they can give you a bit of a cashback, a bit of a discount, a bit of a reward system, correct? Disadvantages of online shopping, what do you have? Disadvantages of online shopping. Number one, inaccuracy of products illustration. That means like your restaurant food card. They say what? Picture is for illustration purposes only. You like the picture so beautiful. Come to your hand. It's actually uh, something different entirely. That may be something as well. Huh? Now, what else? Service is slow. I know, I know what you mean. Like, if you go to the shop, right, you got anything you don't understand, you can ask the worker on the spot and they can answer and clarify any confusion you have. But online, uh, sometimes their reply speed very slow, right? Okay, can service. So you can say return system, very inconvenient, Q&A style, very slow. Return also. The shop you buy already, you can return straight away. You just return. Uh, correct or not? But on now, uh, wow, you want to return. Uh, always very difficult. And then they want to pretend they never see your text. No issue. Correct? Of course, also got scams. Uh. Okay? Just the other day, I bought something online and then it never come. And then the person said he already sent. But the bank, but the bank, I bet and bought, bet and bought beta hunt. 
Okay, now tips to make the most out of online shopping. That means, how do you benefit most from online shopping, right? Number one, make sure you buy during promotional periods. Correct or not? You have your... If, you have your... Uh, most recently was what? Payday sales. May 25th. Correct? Then every other month, you have your one one two two three three four four also got sale. Lazada birthday in March also got sale. Correct or not? So if you buy during promotional periods, it's definitely a lot cheaper. Number two, utilize platform voucher. Whether it is coins, uh, free delivery, cashback, all of this also can help you save uh, a penny or two, correct? Yeah. One more thing that is very crucial with online shopping. Make sure you research and review for more accurate shopping experience. Not only looking at the picture that they post. Correct or not? Picture for illustration purposes only. Ma. Marketing purposes, obviously, they give you the most beautiful picture. Lah. But if you take a look at the reviews down below, that's why it is important for you as a consumer to also post reviews. So you help other customers, other customers help you. Lah. Correct or not? You look at the review of real-life customers, real-life product, then you can have a more accurate understanding before purchasing. So it's very important, uh, I want to say this, personally, I really cannot tahan this. Uh, when you review a product online, review the product. You get what I mean or not? If you have stuff online, in like Shopee, Lazada, whatever, right? You realize the most common review is what? Buyer bagus. Delivering cepat. Benda tak rosak. Nobody, uh, yeah, okay. It's nice to know that the buy the seller is very good, very speedy, the delivery is quick. I, I expect my bundle to not be lost up when I buy it. Well, you know, I don't know why that is a review factor. Okay. You should actually let me buy a mobile phone. You review the phone now. You don't review the seller, ma. You see, like, okay, the phone, I use a D, how, 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 how. Very quick response, the feature, how the function, how. Then maybe now you know, you say, ah, this buy, this seller also very good. La. Delivery also very good. But you can just, the seller and the delivery is your review. Mind blown. Okay? Do we understand this? Anybody has any questions? Are we all okay? Okay. Now, also, at the bottom here, you see that we have a little QR code to the trial paper of 2022 Salengo Trial Set 1 and 2 and SBP Set, okay? Question and answers all provided. However, don't use this code here. Lah. Don't use this code here. I'm going to share with you a separate code now. I will suggest that you scan it, okay? You scan it now. And then you just keep it open in your tabs. Look. You just keep it open in your tabs. Give me two seconds. Okay. Can you see this QR code? Can you scan it first so you get access and you can keep it in your tabs? Okay. So, with that, we're done for today. We're going to wrap things up here for existing students. I'll see you within the week. For those who are here for the seminar, I wish you the best of luck in your exam and see you around. Bye-bye.